Good afternoon and welcome to another story from Dr. Anna. Today's story is about meditation and spiritual growth, and it's a story from my book, Practical Spirituality One, Finding Spirit in Everyday Life. Meditation is the single most important tool of self-development and spiritual growth. Although the majority of people think of meditation as something that only very advanced priests or shamans do, and that it requires specific attributes, skills and attitudes, anybody can and should meditate. If we were to describe meditation, we could use the analogy of digestion. When we eat, certain chemical responses take place in our body in order to break down the food in small particles that can be absorbed by our cells. After all, if there is an interruption of this process and the food doesn't reach the cells themselves, we may eat, but we will not obtain the nutrition we need from our food. In the same way, we may read books and obtain knowledge in many other ways and store them in our brain. However, if this knowledge doesn't reach our heart, it will not become part of us. It will not be part of our engine. That's to say, the part of us being made up of emotions, beliefs, feelings, etc., which sets in motion the rest of our organism, providing us with a direction. Therefore, meditation is the digestion of knowledge in order to make it part of us. The fact that a certain amount of information is stored in our brains doesn't mean that we are any wiser. We simply have accumulated a larger database. In order to make this information part of our belief system and our experience, what we feel, what we know to be our truth, our emotions, we need to process it. And this is done when we meditate. We all know people who have studied several degrees and have powerful minds, but cannot adapt to the environment, cannot develop healthy relationships, cannot become part of a social group. They seem to lack common sense or empathy. They find it difficult to put themselves in other people's shoes. They don't understand why people react negatively to their good intentions. Meditation would help enormously in opening up the heart and promoting compassion, empathy, and the flexibility necessary to listen to other people's opinions without feeling threatened. After all, listening does not mean we need to take in these thoughts, but conversations do need to be a two-way street. We also may know people who talk as if they were reciting quotes and pieces of information, but ultimately, they don't seem to show any emotion. We quickly lose interest and don't feel motivated by this list of figures and sentences that seem to have been learned by heart and which seem to be set in stone. Meditation would make all this information part of the person himself. And an individual point of view would develop, normally expressed with passion because it would come from the heart, not from the mind. When we meditate, we develop an inner knowing of our own that doesn't depend on anybody else's opinion. We become flexible and open to other points of view. We all have ideas about which we feel passionately, but we don't feel threatened by them. We are all one and the same, simply in different states of evolution and with different backgrounds. The idea is that we all need to share who we are without losing ourselves in the process, gaining from each other's wisdom without trying to force our ideas on others or allowing others to do so to us. In order to meditate, we don't need to develop elaborate positions or follow a strict number of steps, which were they not done in the correct order, the whole process would be useless. To meditate, we need to be alone and undisturbed while the meditation lasts. We also need silence, loose and comfortable clothes, some relaxation music would help, and a comfortable position, sitting down or lying down, even though we may find that we fall asleep if we are laying down if we are tired. We then close our eyes and relax our body through a few deep breaths, noticing which muscles are tense and releasing them. Breathe in the light and the energy of the universe and breathe out our tensions and worries of the moment. We then start observing our thoughts as they pass by. We don't get attached to them or judge them. We think of them as clouds in the sky. They are passing, but they are not staying. We don't concern ourselves whether these thoughts belong to us or merely pass through us, whether they are born in us or borrowed by us. As we make room for the silence, the space between our thoughts will grow bigger each time. We begin 
hearing, or intuition, or little guiding inner voice, sudden insights, great truths, realizations, start becoming part of us. When we finish, we give ourselves some time to return to our reality. We will then notice that we feel much more harmonious and calm, and that it is easier to stay in our center, regardless of external circumstances, the pulling and pushing we are subject to every day in our lives. As a subject of meditation, we may concentrate in one subject or a problem, or we may make space for whatever needs to come at each given moment. But either way, whichever way we do it, if we practice 15 minutes every day, or at least two or three times a week, it will definitely change your life. Thank you for listening. See you next time.